Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I do fashion and interiors and other little bits here on YouTube. Subscribe if you want to see more. But shameless plug out the way today, I am really excited to be bringing you my kitchen tour. So backstory, I bought an already renovated bungalow last summer. I actually had my offer accepted way before the pandemic and in hindsight I have never been so grateful to have made the decision to buy somewhere already renovated. The time of moving in trying to get anything done to your home was basically impossible. So the house had already been renovated however I do have a fairly good idea of where certain bits in the kitchen are from and like shades and things like that so I can still give you a little bit of info in terms of the design. So a few other things to keep in mind before I show you around. Both myself and my partner own separate properties. Ryan bought his property before we met and it was a full like reno from a place that needed a lot of love and TLC to something that is very very modern now. It is a lot of work. I have so much admiration for people that could do it but we both decided to have our separate properties and just decided that one of us would probably end up renting one of the properties out and eventually if things worked out we would live together. So with that in mind when I first moved in here I was not sure if this kitchen would be staying this way forever and I would maybe like then rent it out or the other option was that we might end up here for longer or we might buy a different house altogether but it looks like we're going to be staying here for long enough that a potential kitchen reno is actually on the cards which i cannot tell you i'm so excited for but yeah so i'm very grateful that this kitchen was already done it is beautiful but not to my personal taste which i will go into in a bit but also having been through so many different like kitchen meetings and experiences through ryan's property i feel like i've really learned so much already and i'm excited to hopefully at one point make this kitchen even better than it already is but i'll talk you through plans that i kind of have for now and then also dream plans towards the end so keep watching if you want to hear about that but for now let me show you around So we're going to start from the back doors. Weirdly, this was my first view of the house. On viewing, they showed you the house through the back doors, not the front door. But as you can see, there are the double doors which lead you through into what would be the dining space. It's a lovely sized space with a little skylight above it. So this is the dining area, sans dining table, which is probably the thing about my home that I am asked the most about, aside from the fact that some people think bungalows are really weird and they don't understand why I want to live in one. Who wants to go upstairs? I'm sorry. Anyway, I don't have a dining table. As we can all see, I've gone for this lovely little setup with two armchairs and a coffee table. These are from Zara Home. And the coffee table is from Dun Dunelm, Dunelm, is it called Dunelm Mill or just Dunelm now? Who knows? It's basically exactly like the made.com one, except you don't have to wait like 16 weeks to get your hands on it. And it costs about hundred pounds less. But to answer the most asked question of why I don't have a dining table, when my friends come over, we're way more likely to do takeout, have wine. None of us have children yet. So dinners out, drinks out and stuff like that is still a big part of our lives. At that point in our lives where we're still enjoying the little luxuries of being able to like go out with like zero commitments however in the future when children are involved i understand that dining tables are like such a big factor but also out of me and ryan ryan is way more into cooking and in his kitchen he has an open plan kitchen and dining space and he has a dining table at his home so if we ever wanted to host something it would just be there and i'm totally fine with that because then my kitchen gets to stay nice and tidy and he gets to make the mess in his and he's a way messier cook than i am but also from the moment i viewed this house i preferred the idea of this being more of a second lounging space especially since the garden was redone last august it is just such a joy to look out at so on the flip side to this over here we have big double windows you're getting a nice view of the old patio out there yeah one end of my garden has been renovated the other has not but yeah we have a big double window it's lovely it lets so much light in and if you're sitting in the armchairs you get a view both to your left and directly in front of you which hopefully once i do the flower beds in my garden and there isn't just some rhubarb planted there will be a lovely view down here i also just have a little cheese plant he gets really big and out of control and then i have to trim him back so before we move on i thought i would show you the coffee table in full and i know in terms of design this area here is a little bit square so i put some round coasters here no i'm just kidding it's lovely and it's really functional i love the fact that this coffee table has storage underneath this is definitely like a mix of 
function, convenience, and a little bit of aesthetic as well, because obviously we've got the glass top, which is in no way practical. It allows for a little bit of that like cluttered decoration that we all really love, but without actually anything looking too messy because then the top is always clear. But yeah, I love this little area. I love these seats. Loads of people ask me, are they comfy? Oh my God, they are the most comfortable. I absolutely love them. Oh, and I think this pot here is from HomeSense. seen next in the kitchen we have the island which is definitely like the centerpiece and real showstopper of the kitchen also this shot is making me laugh so much because everything looks so gray right now oh, on that note the walls in this kitchen and the walls in the entire house were all painted this color when i first moved in it is dulux perfectly taupe i'm pretty certain it's a matte finish it marks like nothing else this kitchen is so marked but anyway the island i love when i actually first viewed this house it had rose gold like geometric lighting above it which very quickly i swapped out for something a little bit more subtle because rose gold i loved but loved is definitely past tense and i wanted something that felt a little bit more reflective of my style so these pendant lights above the island are from wayfair the vase on the island is from zara home and in that i have i can't remember the name of the company they do like dried flowers but they're like perfectly preserved so they're actually quite green which i love because this space does need a little bit of something and then i just have some faux peonies in there as well they sit on top of coasters which are from anthropology which is probably my most questioned item in the kitchen we then also have a fragrance diffuser from zara home and a pebble don't ask me why the pebble was there. I don't know. The bar stools are from By Cree, which I love and would highly recommend. They are a little bit more expensive, but for that look, I haven't seen anything else like it available in the UK. Their shipping was amazing. They are so comfortable and so incredibly sturdy. questions on them i think all the doors in the house are from howden's whenever i say i don't know where something's from there's always a hundred replies on social media of people that have the exact same item and know where they are from so i'm going to say what other people have told me and um, if anyone else has experience of buying the same things anywhere else just pop them in the comments below but all of my doors are in this lovely oak tone and i love that because it helps to warm up the room and there's also why i went for the woody tone on the armchairs and the coffee table as well i think it ties in well and warms the room up a bit also have this doorstop which is from zara home basically everything in my home if you want to hazard a guess at where it's from zara home and then the kitchen starts so up the top we have my little pantry cupboard this is the real deal i haven't sorted through this there is a lot of food in there and currently really weird food as well like i have seaweed in there at the moment yeah it's lovely and big and these cupboards are really deep as well in terms of long term if i had a family could i fit everything I needed in here, I'm not so sure. But I'll talk about that a bit later. I have jade pool doors across everything. And then below the pantry, we have the inbuilt microwave and oven, They're both Bosch. And I'd actually never had this brand of appliance before, but I do really like them. I also really rate the Zanussi, like integrated appliances. I had those in my last apartment and Ryan has them in his, I believe, at the moment. And I just love them. I really rate them and they're very affordable. And then below the oven, we have my Tupperware drawer, which is definitely very full and very unnecessary to be honest. I could probably cut it out. So after this little section here, we then move on to some counter and cupboard space. We have this cupboard, which normally has a lot more glassware in it. I need to put the dishwasher on. We have a mix of glassware in here. My green glassware is from Sainsbury's. My cut crystal glasses, I believe were from Zara Home, but I've also more recently bought some for Ryan on Amazon. My wine glasses, which I always get asked about, are from Amazon. And then the little Prosecco glasses, which are just the cutest thing, are from Marks and Spencers. Below that, I just have a few bits that are both practical and decorative. I have my pastel and water, which I got from Danone and I love it. It's really like textured and it helps you to mush up everything that you need to mush up really, really easily. I like a lot of natural textures as well. So I love having that in like a real gritty kind of stone texture. And then we also have this marble serving platter, which is mostly there for decoration, but it also works really, really well when we're doing like cheese and wine nights. And the white and gray of it works really, really well into this kitchen as well. Behind that, we have some dried lavender, which my friend Lily gave to me when I think I first moved in here. I feel like it was last summer. Really sweet of her and it works really well in this kitchen because like I said it's got real like lilac undertones especially on the walls and then I also have this little pouch I believe this is from Zara home as is everything in my life but this I love putting like potatoes and onions and things like that in. then we move on to the middle section of the kitchen up here we have an extractor fan and then also a little bit of storage 
above that, which as you can see is housing a lot. Pretty much empty bar, a personalized, I believe, quality street tin. I got sent it once and they are my favorite chocolates and I will now never get rid of this. And then as you can see, we have the subway tile backdrop, which I actually didn't rate when I first viewed this kitchen, but I have to say it's grown on me. Depending on the kitchen design that I end up going for in the future, it could be something that maybe stays as well. But yeah, then we have a gray countertop, which I'm not in love with, I'm not gonna lie. It's not my favorite, but kitchen countertops are spending if you want a good one. So, you know, in terms of this being someone's renovation project, I understand it. I then have a Bosch induction hob, which I love. I love an induction hob. I couldn't recommend them more. I will never go back to gas. Below that, I have a drawer that has all of my frying pans, pots, oven pans. Some of my oven pans are looking a little bit worn, so don't judge me, let me live. And then below that, I have my toaster, kettle. This drawer is not clear. It's basically got a little bit of everything from colanders to measuring jugs, my Nutribullet, the cups for that. A little bit of everything thing goes in that drawer but they're really big deep drawers so I love taking advantage of putting quite chunky things in them one thing I am asked a lot is about the fact that there are minimal appliances out on the side and that is a deliberate very personal choice of mine I really don't like sides being cluttered I don't eat bread very often so I don't need the toaster that much also the grill on my oven is incredible and if I'm gonna like toast something I just really quickly whack my bread under the grill and it's gold in terms of the kettle I don't really drink tea so it's not a big necessity for me and on the odd occasion that I boil water before I like cook pasta and stuff like that I just get it out and then I put it away when I'm done using it much like everything else so yeah they're more kitchen tools for me than appliances that need to be out every second of every day however the one appliance that is out every second of every day is my coffee machine and that is because number one it is a beast of a coffee machine it's so heavy it's really weighty but an incredible quality coffee machine oh and obviously i use it a lot so it has to live there and it looks beautiful as well and because i don't have a ton of other appliances it works i'll talk about the coffee machine a little bit more in a minute but the next cupboard is plates and bowls so there is a lot going on in this cupboard i'm going to do my best to tell you where everything is from all my black plates and bowls are from saints Bree's home. These like taupey grayish colored bowls that I have are from Tesco's home section, which I just love. They were an absolute bargain. These gray plates and bowls up here were also from Sainsbury's home, but like five years ago, and I still haven't really let them go. We then have my mugs from Christmas, which I haven't been able to um, put away. Then we have a lot of miscellaneous plates. These are from Sainsbury's home. They actually match the insides of these bowls and plates up here. This one is from Anthropology, I believe. Yeah, I think I got it as a present from Live Purvis from Anthropology. Everything on the top shelf is a little bit crazy and miscellaneous. And I, honestly, I have no idea where any of it is from anymore. So yeah, we'll move on from that because I just have no idea and it's all really random stuff. Below that, we have my washing machine. This is a Zanussi washing machine and I'm very happy with it. I really rate them as a brand. It actually has a few things in there that need to be washed already. Then in the next cupboard, we have basically like the drinks section, AKA the coffee section. Top shelf doesn't really have too much going on. We have lots of takeaway cups basically. And then teas that I basically never touch unless there's guests around. But my favorite takeaway cup is this one. I think the brand is called Husky. I love them. Me and Ryan have like his and hers. He has the gray one. I have the little neutral one. Then I have two of the Starbucks color changing cups because i am obsessed i also have a couple of brands as well they fit a really good amount of coffee in them as well so i am a big big fan of those this next shelf normally has more like jar glasses here which i really like to use for coffee and then we have my animal mugs this one i believe is from MS. i have no idea where this one was from and this one i believe was urban outfitters i think then here we have jars of like sugar and tea. These little pots are from Marks and Spencers. I also haven't cleared out my cupboards, so please ignore the state of them. They have this lovely wood top and I just love that. We then have my coffees. I drink Taylor's coffee. I have a decaf one and then the volcanic like Java one. They're both amazing. Then we have more mugs and these are the mugs that I use very regularly. Asda. £1.50. It was amazing. Best purchase of last year. Urban Outfitters. ASOS. Probably my most asked about mugs. ASOS. ASOS. My second most asked about mugs. ASOS. ASOS is it for mugs. Urban Outfitters. I've got two of these. Olive bonus. Starbucks. Where is this one from? Waitrose. Caroline Hirons. Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters. And then these two, I believe, are next. I am absolutely dying for a coffee now. The coffee machine in question is from Smeg. It's so, so easy to use, but it's very, very sturdy. I'm often asked, is it worth the money? And in terms of comparing it to a cheaper one, the one Ryan has, the brand name begins with a D. I can't remember which one it is. I will link it below if I can. It costs about £150, whereas this was, I think, around £300. So definitely double the price. Something does do the same thing. I'm not going to, like, BS you and be like, oh my God, but this one's 
so much better. It is sturdier and I love it. For example, if I whack the top of this into my compost bin or my bin, the cap that holds the coffee doesn't fall out into the bin, whereas Ryan's will. In terms of like just how it's made, it's definitely more sturdy. It also is stunning, let's face it. Like it works beautifully in this kitchen. But the reason I mainly justify this purchase was I worked out how quickly I would save the money back by not going to my local coffee shop. And I think it was like basically like a month or two. And I very rarely get coffees out now. So I've saved myself a lot of money by purchasing this. And yes, I could have saved even more money by getting the cheaper one, but I, adore this like i love it so much so i have absolutely no regrets but i will recommend ryan's one then on the countertop i have my aesop hand washes which i absolutely love they're my favorite hand washes one's actually a hand balm but this one is the resurrection aromatic hand wash oh my goodness oh my goodness this is amazing it's like scrubby as well as a hand wash and it's so good and then we have the metal sink as you will find out later this is absolutely on my list of things that i would happily change in this kitchen i just don't rate them i feel like this is the one thing that really lets this kitchen down so for me i wouldn't mind having something that is a little bit snazzier because this i have to like buff and polish regularly just to get it to like look decent as you can see the subway tiles continue right the way around to the fridge they also continue up onto the windowsill as well where i have my diptyque beige candle and then i also have this this is a little pot my mum got me for my birthday a couple of years ago by the way there's workmen down the side of the house but yeah it's really cute it came from a little like independent store in brighton so i'm not entirely sure of the artist or anything like that because it doesn't have any kind of like little signature or anything i also have my knife set just like tucked away down the side of the fridge don't ask me why i don't know why keep it there it's just been there since day one of me moving in and i will never move it out have the fridge by the way my bin is actually down here let me show you so that is where my bin is the majority of the time is it annoying having a floating bin there yeah yeah it is. there's just no place in this kitchen where a bin really sits well it is a real bugbear let me tell you but now we're going to move on to the fridge and the freezer on the top here in this integrated section we have the integrated fridge i will show you in full in a second and then down here on the bottom we have the freezer i'm pretty happy with the size of both they're not super wide they were an adjustment at first though having come from the huge fridge and freezer that i had in my old apartment which also had storage above and below so that is definitely something i missed so by popular request on the home account i'm going to show you the inside of my fridge honestly so many people were like you need to show the inside of the fridge and i was like okay this is the inside of my fridge i went shopping this morning so it is fully stocked as you can see I love wine and oat milk. I also love my vegan condiments. And I have these weird little things which I get asked about all the time. I got them from a little local supermarket and I have no idea how they taste because I have absolutely no intention of drinking them. They just look really cute. I have eye patches up the top, two bottles of Nando sauce because I don't know why, but apparently I needed two. And they're both open. People from the south of France absolutely hate me when I say this, but this is my favorite wine. And then as you can see at the top, we have kind of the drink section and there's a little like Ryan section that I can't reach. Not because I'm gonna drink his beer, but because I really wanna eat those buttons, but my face will not agree with it. Then we have a sausage roll, some fake chicken, some fake bacon, some fake fish cakes, you get the gist. We have little like condiments here, olives, prepped stuff, dairy, tomatoes, all the veggies, all the fruit. And this is the freezer. We have ice, dog food, ice cream. We then have potato waffles, vegan pizza, frozen strawberries, this ice cream. Oh my God, you guys. More vegan desserts and more dog food. This is my life. What's underneath? Oh, vegan gingerbread cookies and some plant burgers. So moving from the fridge back to the island, I'm gonna show you the storage that is underneath it. So my cutlery drawer is definitely not a traditional cutlery drawer lots of people really hate my cutlery but i love it i have petrol like effect cutlery which i just absolutely love i think it's the most interesting fun cutlery i normally use stuff like this for like desserts and stuff i just i think desserts are fun and they need fun cutlery i also have one rogue gold spoon as well but weirdly i have so many spoons that they take up their own cutlery section for each like style of spoon but i also have matte black cutlery which is like my everyday cutlery it's my favorite cutlery from ikea i don't know if it's been discontinued but i absolutely love this it's like matte black so chic goes really well with the black plates and then i have a weird little section where i put like my garlic press my can opener my peeler then there's a miscellaneous weird section which just has some kind of cap from when i moved in and like hole fillings from the cupboard doors and then we have my like bigger 
uh, utensil kind of section, which actually everything fits into for now, and I'm very happy with that. And then in the drawer below, this is the drawer of doom. <laughs> it has a little bit of everything in it, including my notes for this video right now and my Apple Watch, which I took off just before filming. There's like medical supplies, baking paper, oven mitts, tea towels, MS bag for life and then below this drawer is a real contrast compared to the one above because it looks lovely so the contents of this drawer is mainly candles vases all of those cute girly things that you like to have around your home basically lots and lots of diffusers and i also hide my extra peanut butter stash from ryan in this drawer inside this glass he still has no idea next up we have nala's bowls which i'm going to move out of the way they were from pets at home she's not here right now she's at daddy daycare so they're going to get a little bit of a go in the dishwasher in a second yeah this is another big cupboard space these cupboards actually go very very far back they're not shallow by any means i would say they take up at least half the island and this cupboard is really like my cupboard of trash it's full of dog treats for nala and random cookbooks oh my iron normally lives in here as well but the iron's out at the moment also oh my god i need to show you this I still haven't showed you this in a video yet, but this is what I got Nala for Easter. Look, it's like a jelly cat bunny, but for a dog. It's so cute. Because I'm five years old. Anyway, there are so many dog treats in here, so much random trash. This cupboard will probably make you feel so much better about your life. Underneath the sink, we have my cleaning cupboard, which you will have seen if you watch my spring cleaning vlog. This does not look as neat as it did when I finished clearing it out, let me tell you. Then next to that cupboard, we have the dishwasher. I'm not sure what state this is in. I haven't really been here the past couple of days. So this is what my dishwasher looks like, a nice kind of double dishwasher kind of vibe. It's not clean. So yeah, just a little bit of realness there for you. Greenfields team so this whole house has always been worked on by the guys at Greenfields they're amazing I love them so much they do flooring but they also do gardens as well so they have worked on this house a lot they actually worked on this house with the previous owners which was just complete chance so we had carpet everywhere and then this vinyl flooring through the kitchen i've now changed the flooring throughout the whole house except this room and the bathroom this floor wasn't changed due to budget when i first moved in i did two rooms in the hallway and then before christmas did another two rooms so the only room left to do is this room I wasn't 100 percent sure what i wanted for this room all i know is that this floor when the light hits it at certain points in the day it just shines blue because my kitchen is north facing so we get a lot of very like cool light coming through so aesthetically this floor isn't the nicest in terms of like practicality it's also not lovely it is horrible to hoover the rest of the house being lvt a hoover glides over it it is a dream to clean like to hoover and mop it's beautiful this flooring is not oh and before i move on i always forgot to say the kitchen i believe was done by ren when you open the drawers and things like that up it's got all of the ren branding on the inside so I'm gonna put two and two together there and I will probably stick with them especially because this kitchen has been done very very well There are no dodgy joins or anything that really kind of like niggles at us So we're very happy with this one as a whole and in terms of the color of the units I believe it might be a shade called pebble But that brings me nicely to things that I would change one of the first things that I'm going to change is going to be the wall color I don't know if it will come across on camera But the doors and the walls actually don't match in terms of the gray But I am definitely thinking of lifting the wall color slightly something that transitions much better into the rest of the house But still complement the worktops and the cupboards really nicely But the same for the floor as well I would love to redo the floor and have something in a wall a tone but we'll see i'm really looking forward to taking a look at my options and hopefully having the greenfields guys come out again and work on something with me here i will maybe try and tie it in around the same time as having the back doors done which is the next item that i would change i think that might work quite well together because it might even be that i go for a larger back door we will see but i did nod to this in a previous video and lots of you were saying oh a critical style door would look really really great on the back of your kitchen and I agree and that was always the plan from the moment I purchased this place I was like I would love 
to put like a more modern set of back doors in maybe even extend it a bit more to give the room a little bit more light going into it but apparently i just want to be cold sticking more glass in an already cold room i think the more modern back door would work really well with this very modern kitchen and then also transition really nicely into the garden where i have my veg patch and then my greenhouse which is also like a black metal i think it just carries on the flow of like house to garden really really well okay, i'm actually sitting down nana's getting tired so those are the real aesthetic changes that i would make to the room but i have a long list that i sat creating earlier of practical changes that i would make to this kitchen if i were to redesign it oh firstly something i hadn't written down but i've just remembered is where my washing machine is and then the under sink kind of cupboard storage there isn't like a corner section i would love to have like a corner cupboard situation in the corner of the kitchen because that's something that doesn't currently exist and it does feel like a bit of a wasted space and with the potential upstairs extension happening like loft conversion i still don't know what i'm calling it there is the potential to maybe have a utility area and move a few of the appliances from the kitchen into that section that's behind this wall that you see here however if not then in terms of the layout there is nothing i would change about this because i think it does work really well i do think aesthetically in terms of design the different countertop choices is a little bit strange to me though the design isn't for me the layout they've got it bang on i think anyway i think let me know if there's anything that you would change and do differently i would love to know that and i would love an integrated bin because it's something that i have never had but i'm always annoyed by the fact that there just isn't really anywhere in modern kitchens to put a bin if it isn't integrated like i said i would have a different sink i would have two ovens if i had a bigger kitchen in an ideal world if it was bigger i would have two ovens but i love the integrated microwave and i actually use a microwave a lot so it's not something that i would be willing to switch out on now this is the real thing that i have found recently that i would have loved to have had and that is having sockets on or around the island for laptops because i do actually we sit at the island a lot and work just sit on my laptop in general it would have been amazing to have had sockets either on the side just at the base on the floor coming through the center oh my god it would have been the dream and it might be something that i revisit if i redo the flooring because i think that would be the point once the flooring is up to get the electrician in and to have something like that installed that would be an absolute dream for me and if you're designing a kitchen from scratch definitely think about it but yeah that is it for my kitchen tool if there's anything i've missed out any items that i've missed please let me know and I will get back to you in the comments. Also very excited to say I'm probably like 99% sure I'm going to be doing a pre-house renovation house tour. So hopefully that will be coming up at some point. I'm trying to decide when, when to dabble into that. Let me know if you want that. Do you want a full walk through i'd love to do that for you but yeah that is it from me i'm gonna go now my mouth is so dry from talking for so long love you bye